Hey all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the Soundpeats Space. These are a pair of active noise canceling Bluetooth headphones that are affordably priced at under 70 bucks, often goes on sale for less than that. And they have Bluetooth 5.3, 40 millimeter drivers, as well as a fairly modern looking design. The battery life also seems to be pretty impressive. It claims to get upwards of 120 hours on a full charge. And with ANC, it can block up to 35 decibels of sound. Typically, lower frequency noises, including engines and fans, can get repressed when you're wearing these. So it can be a good option if you are traveling or on the go as an alternative to something like TWS True Wireless Buds, which are more compact, but ultimately also have smaller drivers. So this should have slightly more satisfying bass. There's also a low latency gaming mode on here as well, in addition to having support with their companion app on Android and iOS for adjusting properties like EQ, that being said, there are two things to keep in mind. The first, which is they're advertised as being high-res audio certified, which provides you with more detailed sound reproduction, but that's only in the wired mode. If you're using them via Bluetooth, it's not featuring any high-res audio codecs, including, say, Aptex Lossless or LDAC, for example. You have to use a 3.5 millimeter aux cable if you want to get the highest quality for this particular spec. So just keep that in mind. In the Bluetooth mode, it is using the standard SBC and AAC. So there's nothing super fancy there, although for a more budget-conscious model, I would say it still is to be expected. The other point is, even though there is a fairly large 1000 milliamp hour capacity battery inside and has impressive, again, up to 120 hours or so of battery life, and that number gets halved to around 60 to 65 hours when you have active noise cancellation turned on. And that being said, over 60 hours without a battery case of continuous music listening should already be plentiful, and it still is quite good compared to other ANC headphones we've seen in the past. Otherwise, in the packaging here, we have just the space headphones themselves. It comes in two colors, black as well as white, and has a fairly clean look with the oversized Soundpeats logo there. Other packaging contents include a USB Type-C charging cable, as well as the auxiliary 3.5mm cable to turn them into wired headphones, again if you're using it in the hi-fi mode, as well as just some quick user guides. And a closer look at design, they are crafted predominantly out of polycarbonate plastic, but overall doesn't feel too cheap or hollow, and there are some of the microphone vents here also accented in gold to pick up some of your ambient noise and then block those out. Uh, very bottom here features the 3.5mm port, which is nice because a lot of the current generation, especially low-cost ANC headphones, are seemingly trying to cut this port out, so you have to use a dongle with the Type-C instead, which is not super convenient. Glad to see that there's still that legacy port on a pair of headphones at the end of the day. And there's also a dedicated volume control and the power key that can also serve as play and pause controls. The other side features the ANC key that you can tap on to trigger a few different profiles that we'll see later on in the companion app as well. Otherwise, padding for the cushion seems to be pretty generous and it is very soft. These will go over your head, and for a larger pair of headphones like these, weighing in at around 264 grams, I think is pretty competitive. It's not super heavy and feels comfortable enough for a couple of hours of continuous music listening. The top headband here is also interestingly made out of fabric, so it does have an interesting fusion of, again, materials, including some of the moving parts having some metal accents made out of alloy, as well as some of the plastic pieces, but still feel pretty solid. These can swivel completely flat as well when you are traveling, as well as further fold inwards to provide you with an even smaller package when you're on the go, although there is no carrying pouch or case included out of the box. So taking a quick look at the companion app next, uh, you can tell that there will be occasional firmware updates available that improve the system's stability that gets pushed over automatically. You first have to connect to the headphones though using your regular uh, Bluetooth settings, and once you are connected from there, you can launch into the app and it will be recognized. And it also supports multi-point thanks to Bluetooth 5.3, and that means you're able to connect up to two devices simultaneously. For example, both a phone as well as a computer at the same time, and then you can switch back and forth based on what device is playing back music. Otherwise, the UI is quite familiar compared to past products that we've seen from them, but it's clean and shows you the battery percentage remaining. Down below, we're able to adjust the aforementioned equalizer settings. So we can click on a preset, which is the kind of Soundpeats classic, or you can tap on the arrow here to expand the view into a few more options like bass boost, bass reduce, electronic, rock and roll, pop, treble enhanced, classical, depending on the genre of music that you're listening to, and it does make a subtle difference. You can also jump into a custom equalizer, which allows you to play with the frequency sliders yourself if you're looking for that level of granularity. 
And supposedly there's also adaptive EQ, at least from their app, which we have seen on some of their other products, which does a hearing test to automatically provide you with a personalized EQ profile without you having to fiddle around with the sliders yourself. That being said, on these particular headphones, I'm not sure if this particular mode has been enabled to function or not. It might be just a residue from their app, which is meant to work with all their other headphones and products. Flagging that because whenever I tap on the adaptive EQ and then go over to next step and I'm ready, it just always gives you a prompt to turn off the music before beginning, but I'm never quite able to proceed into the next step when it comes to these particular headphones. So my guess is it doesn't really have true adaptive, aka hearing test, EQ mode available, which isn't too surprising considering their price range. However, I think they really should just disable or remove this part completely when you are connected to prevent any confusion or allow you to use it. So maybe that's something that will be unlocked in a future software update, but just a warning that at the moment, this function does not seem to be fully operational on these. Uh, that being said, other elements including changing between A and C versus normal, everything being off, or the audio transparency mode, do all function and transparency here is kind of the ambient awareness mode that uses the microphones to amplify the noise allowing you to have a conversation without removing the headphones for instance that being said you won't find per se more granular sliders for adjusting the strength of the anc per se there's no real adaptive active noise cancellation that cranks it up all the way if you're in a really loud area versus minimizing it if you're in a quiet zone. But again, that's par for the course on a more affordable pair of headphones, I would say. Now you'll also find access to the gaming low latency mode, reducing the latency down to 65 milliseconds. That tends to work quite well, although the audio resolution and detail will be slightly lost, but you get the advantage of not having any lag or delay when you are doing fast frame rate gaming or watching back videos. That being said, for a pair of more conventional headphones, I would say that latency tends not to be a huge problem even in the normal mode because the left and right sides are still connected by a wire. They're not communicating wirelessly with one another compared to TWS buds have to communicate wirelessly between the two sides and also the phones. So there tends to be a bit more lag because of that. So even in the regular profile, I honestly didn't really encounter too much lag watching back videos on YouTube and Netflix that it felt comfortable enough. When it comes to the audio quality, the Soundpeat Space also punched slightly above their weight. Again, the large 40mm drivers can reproduce a fairly wide frequency range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, and for the most part when I listened to pop as well as rock and EDM tracks, they sounded pretty rich and full with a good kick when it comes to drum beats. You kind of feel that impact more clearly compared to smaller wireless buds, for example. At the same time, they are again quite comfortable, so even after around three to four hours of listening, it didn't really feel too fatiguing on a longer flight or on a plane or a car ride, for example, and similarly didn't accumulate too much sweat or heat uh, over my years as well. So fairly good in terms of ergonomics. And in terms of acoustic tracks, I did feel like the mids and trebles also had sufficient detail and clarity, so I could still hear textures of different singers' vocals and other string instruments, for example, without too many problems, even though they are just uh, single driver units at the end of the day. The active noise cancellation profiles between transparency on and off can also be cycled just by tapping on this key, and overall it works nicely. When I was next to a desktop computer, I could almost no longer hear any traces of the fan in the background at all. Similarly, on a flight, uh, the engine noises do get repressed extremely well, and you don't have to turn the volume up quite as high to listen to your music anymore. And what's really neat is the active noise cancellation function works independent of Bluetooth being turned on. So that can be useful if you're trying to sleep, for example, and just block out some external noise without necessarily listening to music. And because the Bluetooth chip is turned off, you're also conserving a little bit of power as well. There have been models we've seen in the past which required you to turn on Bluetooth the entire headphones basically just to use ANC, but it looks like on these, you can control these functions independently. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of, again, the Soundpeat space. Although it doesn't necessarily bring anything revolutionary to the table, it is a very solid pair of low-cost ANC headphones if you're always traveling. As long as you don't need something, for example, when you're doing vigorous sports and jogging uh, outdoors, since that's an area where TWS buds may have an advantage because of being even more lightweight. However, 
However, if you want something primarily when you're sitting down and doing work, uh, when you're traveling and on the go, these are going to be just a little bit more snug, having slightly louder volume output, a bit more bass, and extra comfort as a result, plus slightly more well-performing ANC out of a similar price range. The companion app works well, with the exception of the adaptive EQ mode that perhaps should be disabled or just removed in the future if they don't plan on bringing it over to prevent confusion. But aside from that, I think the audio quality is very clean. It's clear, having a sufficient amount of bass that it punches, again, slightly above its weight. You can learn more details of interest in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Soundpeats Space.